Uh, now, they were part of British music invasion of America in the 1960s and influenced the likes of Paul Weller and Tom Petty. But the Zombies split up before the seminal album, Odyssey and Oracle, was released, now considered to be one of the greatest rock records of all time. Well, the band got back together 15 years ago. They're now going on tour with their new album. We'll talk to them in a moment. First, let's remind ourselves of their biggest hit, She's Not There. Well, no one told me about her, though they all knew. But it's too late to say you're sorry. How would I know? Why should I care? Please don't bother trying to find her. She's not there. Ah, oh, the years just melt away. With us now, Rod Argent and Colin Blunstone from The Zombies. Musical legends for some oh, of us. You. What thank an honour it is to have you both in the studio. Oh, it's Fantastic. A pleasure to be here. Yeah, and uh, The Zombies, well, it just goes to show there is life after the death of a band because you're back. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. yes. We, we actually, um, we got back by accident in... Uh, uh, just around 2000, 1999, uh, I was doing a concert with John Dankworth, who used to be uh, a friend before he very sadly passed away. Colin was in the audience, and um, he got up and sang a couple of songs. We decided to um, just go out and do half a dozen gigs for fun. Mm. And somehow, those half a dozen gigs have, have blossomed into travelling around the world. We've just come back from Manila, Japan. We've done, we do about, what, two tours of the States every year, I think? Absolutely, Something yeah. Like it's two or three, actually. Yeah. 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 So you sort of split up before you realised how big the band was, I suppose. Well, it's true, actually. Um, the world was a bigger place then, and we didn't realise what was going on all around the world. Oh. And it was only after we'd split that we realised, at no time during the time we were together, did we not have a hit somewhere? So, but, but we'd already split up. Like. If you'd had the internet at the yeah, time, you'd have known you yes. were big in the Philippines. Yes. If not yes. in Japan... I know! <laughs> we went over to the Philippines, you know, yeah. and there were 2,000 people waiting for us. The, the flight was about three or four hours late. And we thought, oh, God, who's... who's this is in your new incarnation. Uh, no, no, this no, is the old incarnation. Right. We, we got off the plane and we were looking backwards to see who was on the plane. <laughs> yeah. All these people were welcoming someone. And it was us. And it was us. <laughs> Oh, we cool. opened to 28,000 people in the Philippines and we thought we were going to be playing in a bar in a hotel and we'd get on the beach in and the we day. we were getting and... £80 a night between us. For, uh, yes, for, for a 10-day residency. That's not so good. the Aaron Music Coliseum. <laughs> yes, it was back in the 70s when 80 quid was quite a lot of money. It was a lot of money in those yeah. <laughs> Is it true you made the 9 o'clock news when you got number one in America? Yeah, I phoned home, you know, uh, to my dear old mum who's still, still alive, she's nearly 99, and uh, I phoned and said, uh, she said, you've just been on the nine o'clock news. I said, what? And she said, yeah, you're, you're the first band to get a number one in the States after the Beatles with a self-written song. Mm -hmm. um, so that was amazing, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you're still making music now, of course. You've got a new album. Uh, this is Moving On, recorded at the Stern Grove Arts Festival in San Francisco. It sounds great, uh, but you didn't exactly know them. You were no, checking the words, weren't you? Absolutely. That's the first time we'd ever played it. Rod, Rod just said, let's play that new song. And we hadn't really rehearsed it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you watch my eyes, I'm actually reading the lyrics <laughs> that, are, that are on the floor. That's a genuine first performance. <laughs> That's what's called winging it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, but you'd yeah. never, if you hadn't admitted that, we'd never have known. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the new album is called Still Got That Hunger, which you clearly have, yes? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Still performing live. It's very important to us, actually. Um, I mean, we love doing the old stuff and, and actually rediscovering some of the old stuff, which we maybe didn't play the first time around uh, live, you know. But at the same time, to feel that we've got that creative path forward, especially at this stage in our careers, is, is a hugely energising thing. Yeah. And it's something that, that is very important to us. But fans who come along would also probably want to hear, I would anyway, yeah. want to hear... Colin's stuff from when he, he yeah. went solo and your stuff from Argent as Hold well. Yeah, like that, yeah. Lovely. We, we, we play a you know, selection of all those songs. It's getting that mixture right that's the important thing. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> it, it was a shame that, that, that you, you split so too soon. And, and part of it was because... Well, there was a split between the, the writers and the performers in the battle, It, it was there? money, really, Bill. Mm. Um, it, was, it was the fact that Chris White and myself, uh, being the writers, actually had a very good income because, as Colin said, around the world, we later found we almost always had a hit somewhere. But um, for the other guys, um, they, they had, you know, just based in the UK. And we only really ever had one hit in the UK. Um, and they had to exist. They had to live. Uh, our guitarist had just got married... Uh, and it was a question of... of uh, it was a purely commercial question. Yeah. Um, and then we hear people like uh, Paul Weller saying that Odyssey and Oracle was, like, one of the sort of store albums that they, they refer back to, and it's extraordinary sadness in some ways to have left it that long, isn't it? Well, it's between... certainly a strange story, isn't it? Yeah. But, I mean, the, the, the upside is that that album has sold steadily for the last... It's nearly 50 years. Amazing. In fact, it sells more now than it yeah. did when it first came out. <laughs> and we were very lucky in that uh, we own that album. And so the royalties, this is quite unusual for a mm. 60s band, the royalties come to us. So in the end, it hasn't been such a sad story. Yeah. Do you know Paul, even, even a couple of weeks ago, um, quoted it as Paul being his favourite album of all time. Yeah. And he still goes out and buys copies for people. I mean, bless him. Mm. And tell me about the Odyssey, because it's spelt wrong kind of famously, isn't it? Do you know, uh, for years, I, I didn't even tell Colin, we, we, we were away on tour and the album design was being done and we loved the mock-up of the album design. We thought it looked absolutely fantastic. We've got the same artist doing our new album uh, cover as well. Um, but when, uh, when he showed it to us, when we came back from tour, we said, it's spelled wrongly. And, uh, and, the, and the, the, the record company said, well, it's too late now. It's printed. <laughs> it's printed. I mean, they only gave us a thousand quid to make the album yeah. anyway. So it's yeah. almost, there's something almost spinal tap about well, it. It, uh, is, uh, it? it really is. That's endemic to this business, actually. Yeah. I'm afraid. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Great well, pleasure. Absolutely. Really lovely Thank to you. see. And the Zombies album is called Still Got That Hunger. Thank